I've always been fairly shy, I suppose. As a kid, I typically didn't like talking to teachers or other adults and got embarrassed very easily. This one time when I was about 10, a teacher approached me in the playground asking to speak with me. I don't know what about. I told her I needed to go to the toilet and I literally stayed in the toilet for the entire lunch break just to avoid her. Even in my early 20s, I found it very hard to make small talk with people. When I was living in Japan, I remember one time being on a train with a work colleague I didn't really know, and I found it so uncomfortable speaking with him. The whole time we were speaking, I was honestly trying to think of a way to get off the moving train, noting that it was hurtling along the tracks at around 80 kilometers an hour. It wasn't really until I was in my 30s that I finally managed to find a way to somewhat control my anxiety in social situations, but even so, I still don't like having to make small talk and deal with bosses and work colleagues and all the rest of it, hence why I work at home. But just last week, something happened, and along with it came flooding back all my social anxiety. It was so stupid, I'll tell you what happened soon, but I've been anxious ever since. I've been intentionally avoiding people for about a week now, and I'm only feeling slightly better. Anyway, about a week ago, I was walking along the street to go visit my mother in the aged care facility when two idiots in a car drove past me. The passenger leaned out the window and screamed out, Hey, moron! and then drove off laughing. I don't know what happened, but I just lost it. I sprinted after the car running about 400 metres when I saw up ahead that they had got stuck in traffic, and here I was fast approaching their car with my camera out. Moron, eh? Their faces turned white, but then I started thinking, what am I doing? I've got young children. I don't know who these guys are. They might have a knife or a gun or anything. And so I sprinted off. Discretion is the better part of valour, right? I was absolutely puffed. I just sprinted for like 500 metres, but then these guys, of course, drove past me again screaming out obscenities and threats. So I bolted through a nearby park where they couldn't follow me, at least not in their vehicle, and made it safely to my mother's residence. After that, I felt a bit angry. I thought, what the hell is wrong with society with people just yelling at people on the street? Soon after, I felt exhausted as the adrenaline started to wear off. Actually, it wasn't this that brought back my social anxiety. It was what happened next. You see, I was here to help my mum make a phone call to her bank to activate one of those physical tokens so that we could access her online banking. You'd think that would be easy, right? Wrong. You see, recently we've had these cyber attacks in Australia, with hackers stealing millions of people's personal information, so of course the banks are being very cautious. We rang up my mum's bank and I explained to them that I'd be helping her to activate her token. They said that would be fine, but they needed to speak to her first to verify her identity. They asked her name and date of birth, and that was fine, but then they asked her address. Now, she knew she was at the aged care facility and quoted their name, but the guy on the phone wanted to know the exact street address, which she didn't know, so I told her. But then the guy on the phone said, no, you can't have somebody in the background helping you. We'll have to cancel that question and ask you another. The next question was, what's your email address? My mum's been in the nursing home for almost a year now, so she hasn't used her email at all during that time. She replied, maryjanesmith at gmail.com, which was a pretty good attempt, but the guy said, no, that's not correct. Her actual email is marysmith at gmail.com. Well, not really, but for the purposes of this example, you know what I mean. So the guy said that she'll have to answer another question. The next question was, to the nearest $100, what is the balance of your account? Again, my mum had no idea. She hasn't used that account for at least a year. As her power of attorney, I do all her finances for her. Of course, she failed that question, and so the guy continued asking question after question for what seemed like another 15 minutes. What was the latest transaction you made? What's the last three digits of your account number? Where did you last use your debit card? All of which she couldn't answer. So I got the guy on the phone and said, look, you know she's in an aged care facility. You can understand she doesn't deal with any banking on a daily basis. She wouldn't know any of these details. He said he understood our frustration, but he explained to me that they had to play it safe because of all these recent data breaches. I asked him, as my mum's power of attorney, is there nothing I can do? The only thing he said I could do was go down to the local branch with the power of attorney documents and sort it out in person. So that's exactly what I did. A couple of hours later, I was down at the branch with all my mum's documents. I told the lady behind the counter the situation that we needed to activate my mum's token, but that she failed her identity check on the phone. I told her that I have power of attorney and showed her the documents, and then she said, no worries, you just need to bring your mum down here and get her to sign these documents. I said, she's bedridden. There's no way she can get out of the facility unless she has a team of nurses with her. Can't I just take those documents and get her to sign them? 
no, sorry, they have to be signed in the presence of the bank manager. And then I just said, all of this just to activate a token? She replied, oh, you know, because of the data breaches, we have to play it safe. She finally told me that if I could get a doctor's certificate stating that my mother is unable to attend, then we should be able to work something out. But otherwise, there was absolutely nothing she could do. So I ended up leaving the bank absolutely miserable. I mean, I needed access to my mum's account in order to manage her affairs, like paying for prescriptions and the nursing home and all that. And since then, I've been completely overwhelmed by social anxiety. I haven't been able to speak to people in public. I really don't know why. I mean, it's not that the bank people were particularly mean or anything. They were just following protocol. But I just feel completely exhausted even thinking about speaking to people now. It's always so draining. For work, I've had to deal with a couple of students over the last few days, and I've had nothing but feelings of dread. Hopefully, I get over it soon. Not to mention that my knee still hurts after running after those wannabe gangbangers. By the way, I found my own solution to my mother's banking problems by downloading the bank's app, which can produce virtual token codes. Luckily, there was no need to verify my mum's identity, which I found a bit strange. As I said, this one thing, dealing with my mother's bank, really sent me into a downward spiral. It probably wasn't the bank per se, but it certainly was the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm.